Hello friends, welcome. In this video, I'm going to talk about gravitational lens. Now, this video is made specifically for students who are giving the UPSC civil services exam or other government exam. So we won't go into the detailed aspects of this concept that is equations and all those cosmological phenomena. We will try to examine and understand this concept with the basic understanding of physics that we have from class 10th and some other concepts that we have picked up from reading regular current affairs in our day-to-day -day life. So now look at this here. This image here is the image of a gravitational lens, like what we see when the phenomena of gravitational lensing occurs. So this circular thing you see here, this is the image of a distant galaxy. And through the phenomena of gravitational lensing, we are able to see this distant galaxy. So it's just one galaxy which we are able to see in a circular ring form. Now this is a very perfect image that has been taken by Hubble telescope. Now generally the image will not be as perfect or as circular. It may be parabolic, elliptical or any other shape. But like this can be, you can take it as a reference image of how when you using the phenomena of gravitational lensing, if you take a picture of a distant galaxy, this is how it looks. So now moving ahead, I'll just highlight two things here. The concept and the application, both are relevant for UPSC examination mains, while the application is relevant for prelims as well. So in prelims, they can't ask you to explain the concept. Maybe they'll give you one or two line question based on it. But the focus will be mostly on the application part only. So let's just jump right ahead into the concept associated with gravitational lens. First of all, let's understand why it is called lens. The reason for it being called a lens is, so let's see, this is a convex lens. What happens is when a light, which is parallel to this principal axis of the lens, st strikes the lens, it converges on the focus of this lens. So a convex lens is converging this light. So if you use other lens, the lens may diverge the light as well. But the idea is that the path of light is being changed due to presence of this lens. Now, why this path changes is due to change in refractive index of the medium. Now, I'm not going to teach you optics right now. So just I hope most of you would know this, that when the refractive index changes, light changes its path. And thus, a lens can be used to converge or diverge the light. So this is with regard to a lens. Now coming to gravitational lens, what happens is, let's see, this is a source. So the source can be a star, a galaxy, any such thing. And let's say here we have a massive object. So again, this object can be a star, a black hole, or a galaxy, or even a cluster of galaxy. So, but the idea is this object should be a massive object. And then here we have an observer. So let's see, this is an observer. So just like a traditional lens bends the light, this massive object here also bends the light. I'll explain how it does that, but let's just draw a simple diagram here. So let's assume this light, which was traveling in this direction, if this object hadn't existed, due to the presence of this object, this light starts to bend. So there's a bend in the light. So again, this light, which was supposed to go here. Similarly, if you draw another set of light, you'll see there's again a bend. So thus the light is bending around this massive object. Now, why is this happening? Let's look at some phenomena that is gravity. So Newton's concept of gravity is very simple. But when Einstein talked about gravity, he basically explained it. So this, you can see, this is a rubber sheet. Okay. And it's stretched from all its sides. So if this ball was not there, this sheet will be absolutely horizontal. Ye ek dam flat hoga. Humne iske upar ek ball rakh diya, which is a heavy ball. So we have kept a massive object at the center of this sheet. Now you can see this sheet has a curvature now. It is bent. So the area in this region of this sheet has more bending. So the rubber is more bent here. And here the gradient or the bent is less. 
So as you go closer to this massive object, the gradient or the slope is increasing. Now this sheet can be taken as what our universe or space is. So this sheet is nothing but the space. This massive object is what we are talking about, the thing in between. So this is this can be galaxy, black hole, star, cluster of galaxy, anything. Now say when you are throwing a ball in this direction, this ball will actually be bent and it will travel till it reaches here. So this is the path this ball will follow. Fine. If you throw a ball in here, this ball will travel like this. Instead of even if you give a velocity in this direction, this ball will bend because of this bend in the shape of this sheet. So this is exactly what is happening here. So this universe or the open space, sorry. So this universe or the open space is the sheet of rubber that we were talking about. This massive object here, this object is the ball that I was showing that heavy ball at the center of the rubber sheet. Now that ball, what it has done, it has distorted the space around it. That, the, that means that the space is bent. So as you saw, the space is more bent towards the ball. Thus, this light and this light is the small ball that we were throwing. So instead of this light follow, flowing, like moving in this direction, that is a straight line path, light is being bent. And when the light is being bent, this observer, which otherwise wouldn't have seen a light coming from this source because there's obstruction, it would be able to see this source. And as I have again already said that light travels in a straight line. So for this observer, this image will form like they will see an image somewhere here. So an image will be here and an image will be here. So the same source will have two image, one here, one here. It will actually have more than two image. When I showed you that circular shape, this is how this circular shape is formed because now this is just a 2D plane. If you make a 3D plane, an image will be formed like right above this paper somewhere here because of bent. An image will be formed in the back side of this paper, let's say somewhere here. So a circular image may form. The general idea is multiple image may form. The circular image was a perfect case. So for the same source, multiple image will be observed by this observer. Yani ki, ye jo observer hai, ye ek to is source ko dekh paega, jo ki generally nahi dikta, kyunki beech mein ek galaxy hai, ya ek black hole hai, ya ek star hai. Dusra, ye jo yaha se light a rahi hai, ye jab yaha pe bent hoti hai, and since we perceive light as traveling in straight, straight line only, so ye light jaha pe ye dono ray milenge, yaha pe ek image dikhega isko, is source ka, jaha se light a rahi hai. Similarly, here he will see an image of that source from where the light is coming. So these are multiple images of the source that the person will see. So source image 2, source image 1, source image 2, while the source is here, which is not exactly visible. And this can form in a perfect case, a circular image. So in very simple terms, this is the concept of gravitational lens. Actually, the concept of gravitational lensing and this massive object here, which is bending the light, this massive object is the gravitational lens. So earlier when we see a mirror, like a, an object of glass was acting as a lens, like this convex lens when I told in beginning. So this was a lens here, this massive object is the lens. Now in this case, in traditional lens, while light is being bent because of change in refractive index, in gravitational lens, light is bent, like there's a bent in light because of a bend in the space and time and this bend in space and time space and time is due to gravity exerted by this massive object so i hope you have understood the phenomena of gravitational lensing and what is a gravitational lens so what it is helping us do it is helping us see a galaxy or a star which is so far away that we couldn't have been able to see from our naked eyes further as you can see earlier had this object not been here what we would have seen is light only only this much so light which is emitted in this cone will only reach the observer right now because of this massive object more light is reaching this object since more light is reaching this object this image that is being formed which otherwise wouldn't have been as bright because less light would have reached so the image is also bright so one we are being a we are seeing far away objects and their brightness is increasing too. 
Now let's look at some of the applications of gravitational lens. The first application is it helps in detection of dark matter. So dark matter is invisible to our tools of observation. So we generally observe using light, sound. So light can include all those microwave. I mean, light here is an electromagnetic wave and electromagnetic wave includes your microwave, radio wave, ultraviolet, infrared. So all these dark matter is immune to all this. Dark matter is immune to sound. So how do we perceive dark matter? Dark matter still bends the space around it. Dark matter does interact through gravity. And thus, even if we observe that nothing is there through our traditional tools like electromagnetic waves, we can still, by observing the phenomena of gravitational lensing, can predict that yes, dark matter is here. So it helps in detection of dark matter. It acts as telescope to view distant galaxy. I explained how this galaxy here was. So this galaxy here was visible despite a massive object being here because light is being bent and reaching this observer. So that is how we can see distant galaxies. Then it also helps us understand early star formation. So there are two things. First, light from, there are like, universe is huge. There are stars or galaxy which are three, four billion light years away. Now, the meaning of the term three, four billion light year means is that the light from that place takes three billion year to reach us. So we are basically seeing the light which we are receiving right now is 3 billion year old. It was emitted 3 billion years ago. So we can see universe at its more nascent stage as well as the edges of universe, the outer edges of universe. Nowadays, it is mostly believed that it has stars in it early stages. So while the center of universe, like the place where we are at, we are not exactly at the center of universe, but like the place where we are at, we observe that the stellar bodies, the celestial bodies, they are in a more mature stage. While from the edges or outward portion of the universe, these bodies are still in their formation stage. So we get images of star from their formation stage. So that is one application. Then it can also help us study supermassive black holes. Just like dark matter interacts with gravity, black holes also interact with gravity. Now they absorb all the EM waves, so they do interact with EM waves, but we cannot predict their mass so easily. Now through this Gravitational lensing phenomena, we can predict mass of black holes and other things. Further, it also can help us understand the expanding rate of universe. Expanding rate of the universe. It can help us understand the structure of the universe. So if you know where, what type of galaxies are, where dark matter is, where black holes are, the structure of universe is getting clearer to us because of the phenomena of gravitational lens. Now, it can have more application. It will be very difficult to list down all the cosmological applications of gravitational lens. But just understand that what gravitational lensing helps us in doing is it is helping us see. It is helping us observe the universe in a better way. So any application which is related to observing the universe, seeing the universe can be an application of gravitational lens. So keep an open mind if an exam a question comes related to application of these gravitational lenses. So here, when I showed you this image, I hope it is clear now why it forms a circular image in perfect cases. In some cases, the image can be like, you can see some bits here, here, like this. So it can be scattered, it won't be as circular, but this is a perfect case and this is because this source is behind this bright object. So the source is actually behind it and when light is coming, it is being so all these light, which was supposed to imagine this is going outside the plane of paper. So all this light, which was radially coming out, ye agar paper se bahar aap aisa socho ki ye light jo hai aapke screen ya paper se bahar ki taraf aa raha hai. To ye light actually bend ho ja raha hai aapki taraf. Thik hai? To ye saare light bend ho raha hai aur ye sab apna image bana raha hai. Aur is case mein ek perfect circular image bana hai. Jabki there can be cases where the image will not be as perfect. It can just be some broken pieces of a circular image. So this is the concept of gravitational lens and it is characterized by a ring shape image of a distant galaxy. So this is one of its very important feature and this is how we also can tell if an image is through the phenomena of gravitational lens or normal phenomena. So anyway, I hope this concept is clear. So if you have any doubt, you can always ask in comments. Thank you. Have a good day.